Sure. Except, in, except we port 10,000 bugs into the archive, but I think people won't like it. But with this code, we can easily test if uh, Clang is working or not. So we did we build on the AMD64 uh, ar architecture. Uh, we haven't tested either the performance or the quality of the binary code generated. So that means you can still have some miscompiled code. It will be very unfortunate and very unlikely, but it can still happen. So the results are published on clang.debian.net, and we did the rebuild using the, the credit uh, that Debian has on the Amazon cloud. Uh, Luca helped me uh, to set up everything, and David Suarez, who is now in charge of, the, of this infrastructure, is uh, taking the lead. And he, he helped me uh, about uh, some weird Ruby seg fault. So here is uh, the result that we've got now. So we, we already did five rebuilds, basically one for each major uh, version of Clang. So as you can see, the first version here, we were a bit more than 14%. That basically because the compiler was uh, not fully supporting the C and C++ standard. We have a decrease here. That means that the feature has been completed. We have everything ready into the compiler. And then it decreases again. So the increase is basically because we are adding some more check into the compiler. So I sh already showed you this example about the unsigned int, but we have also some more check which has been added uh, further. So this one is a security issue. It's basically when you are uh, using the sprintf in a wrong way, Clang is going to trigger uh, an error here, a warning, uh, an error. And we have about uh, thir uh, 36 occurrences of this error into the Debian archive. So that means that uh, we have at least uh, 36 potential security issues in the archive regarding this stuff. That doesn't mean that it can be used, but we should fix that. So here is some very common errors that we can find into the archive by rebuilding with Clang. This one is my favorite. It's, uh, th there are some developers who think that using dash O Something bigger than four will uh, improve the quality of the generated code. Uh, the record is uh, by uh, libdbi driver with dash, dash o20. <laughs> uh, GCC accepts that is not an issue. I think they fall back to uh, dash o4, but Clang refuses it. So it's, it's if you want to contribute to uh, how it works, it's very easy to fix this one. You just grab the code and that's it. Uh, this one really sucks, this code. And we have that uh, 120 times into the archive. Basically, you do a, a basic declaration in true uh, without any argument, and you return nothing. So GCC does not return anything by default. He's happy with that. We, if you use dash w error, it will show you a warning, but it won't return an error. While Clang is considering that as an error by default, which I think is good, especially when you are dealing with libraries. If you have a function which is returning return and you are using this function from a library, you will, will, will get garbage and it can break anything after. We have the other way around. You have a void function which is returning a value. So uh, GCC is complaining but not treating that as an error while Clang is. Is Clang thinks that it is an error. Obviously it is, but this one is not a big deal. Uh, this one is a GCC extension. Uh, in C++, you can uh, define uh, a variable size for the array. And Clang, doesn't, Clang developer doesn't want to support such things. They think that we, on, we should only use the standard. So uh, the latest rebuilds prove that uh, Clang is now ready. Most of the problems that we find now are upstream. So we have plenty of bugs to report. So what we did since last year, so uh, first we improved, the, we had some patches over uh, Collab QA tools, which is the tools that the Debian QA team is using to parse the GCC log. So we improved that to support Clang. In, so that means that if you are using now Collab QA tools, it will work also on the Clang, on the Clang logs. We started to report bugs. We are using the, this, this tag, Clang uh, FTBFS. So we only reported 10 because we try to provide patches, but it takes time and we need to test everything after. Uh, some patch has been applied already, but uh, as I told you, we have 1,200 uh, 1, bugs uh, regarding packages. So it is going to take a lot of time. So I'm not pushing that for Jesse. Uh, and we need help to report those bugs. 
one other way will be to uh, let upstream know that it is existing and they should uh, fix their bad code. We also introduced some new packages. Uh, we were using uh, two different packages, which were LLVM and Clang. And uh, when I tried to package LLDB, which is a new debugger uh, into the LLVM community, uh, it requires both LLVM and Clang's sources. I don't mean headers, sources of the base code. So I was really pissed, so I decided to uh, to uh, start again from scratch and uh, design those packages as a LLVM toolchain package. So that means that now we have uh, six tarballs, and from these six tarballs, we are building all these packages. So LLVM, Philip is going to talk a bit more on this subject. So Clang, I already told you about. Compiler RT is to uh, replace some pieces of the glibc. Um, Poly is a um, polyhedrical optimization library. Uh, it's like graphite in GCC, and it has been done by the same guy. Uh, LLDB is a new debugger, so the main advantage to this debugger compared to GDB is that it is able to, uh, you are able to use template into, into the debugger. So if you want to evaluate the templates or the C++ method or some uh, very weird C++ code, it is going to use the Clang parser and it is going to give you the result of the template, which obviously GDB is not able to do because it has its own C++ parser and it's not working very well with C++. So this debugger, many people think that it is going to replace GDB at some point. It's not ready, fully ready yet, but at some point it might replace it. Uh, C++ 11 migrate, it is if you have a C++ code and you are using some, uh, some, uh, some code which will be improved by C++ 11, this code is automatically able to detect such pieces and automatically update it to C++ 11 code. So it many people are starting to use that into the LLVM community and there is some debate to switch the base code to C++ 11. And C long format is yet another uh, formatting tool for C and C++. Uh, we have plenty of them. Uh, here is a user one. They say it is better, but I'm not convinced, but it's a different story. Uh, so while doing this uh, LLVM2 chain, we took the opportunity to switch to developer to DH and we decreased the number of lines by something like three. And it is, to my mind, it is way easier to maintain and to uh, understand. Uh, thanks to Luca, our DPL, uh, we did that uh, together at a conference during a boring presentation. So we, uh, we worked on the rebuilding the archive and using the deb file and publish them into a repository. So the idea here was to uh, test if the binary generated and if the packages generated are working or if you get some miscompile. Uh, we published that. Uh, to tell you the truth, we didn't receive many uh, feedback. But uh, as you can see here, you can try. It's still working. You might have some dependency issue because the archives changed since then. But you can uh, run ls or awk uh, you built with Clang. So it's a nice proof of concept. Uh, that's a not the easy part. So we did the wanna build and build the uh, installation. We're trying to get in touch with the folks at Debianport, but they say, sorry, our server is full. We cannot uh, add a new architecture. So we decided to install that. We deployed that on Debian D, uh, deb bah, sorry, d uh, build d clangdebiannet but unfortunately, it was too hard to maintain and to customize. We had so many issues that we decided it was not a good solution to continue. We were spending so much time on the build D and wanna build, and we were quite frustrated. So uh, we took the opportunity of uh, GSOC, uh, of Leo GSOC, who is right here, to uh, start using uh, a new project, which was called Debuild Me, but now we that we call Debuild, which, uh, which means uh, stupid in French. Uh, it has been started, like many things in the Debian, uh, currently by Paul Tagliamonte. And uh, Leo wrote the documentation, improved the code, fixed many bugs, uh, dropped MongoDB to go back to PostgreSQL. And now we have a nice infrastructure, so it's still the, the old name. But basically, it's just to provide a new wanna build uh, with buildd uh, to rebuild with various workers. So here you can see that we, we rebuilt with AMD64. We scan build. Here you have to trust me, it's called uh, C-Lang Analyzer. Uh, it was the goal of uh, Leo's GSOC, so uh, we are going to talk more tomorrow during the lightning talk about that. But uh, here is what we've got. So we are using that to rebuild the package and uh, to, uh, to run some static analysis and so on. 
So Zach had also the idea that it might be a good switch for Debian port now. So we have to discuss if uh, some people are interested, but we think that might be the future of, uh, of rebuilding services for PPA or stuff like that. So uh, this stuff produces various workers. So the normal build with GCC, the uh, scan build or c -lang analyzer, so the static analysis of the C and C++ code. Uh, Lintia check, Coccinelle, which is used by the kernel, which is done by, I, uh, by Iril and Parisis in France, which is a, a kind of static analyzer. It's not exactly that, but uh, it's a good summary. And, uh, and Clang, which is going to be done today and deployed today, hopefully. Uh, we still have to do the, the packaging of Debil. And uh, we have to improve the website. Uh, currently, the, the Debil Me and Debil Web interface really sucks. So we have to improve the usability of this, but it is going to be easy. And uh, we have to publish the, the binary produced with that. So uh, I don't think we will uh, publish a repository with a normal build, but we are going to publish a new repository of the Debian archive with that. Un booter? <laughs> yeah, me. Oh well, I'll uh, yell. Um, no, is that okay? Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> um, I couldn't hear me. Uh, I was just wondering whether you tried any of the other alternative Wanna builds before writing your own. Oh, uh, uh, we haven't wrote our own. We use one of the alternative, which okay. has been developed by Paul for one right. or two years. Okay, fair enough. We, we took this one because we know the guy and we know that he was willing right. to maintain it and to update it. Uh, yeah, because it's a, a bit crazy. I, I agree Paul. absolutely but that we <laughs> need something, but there's various sort of partly done yeah, things. Yeah, no. and, and I, I but it was already existing and we had the feeling that it was a well designed project mm -hmm. with someone who is willing to maintain it and, cool. and someone who is very easy to work with, which helps. But uh, we are going to package that stuff, and uh, hopefully other people will use it. Because we really think that there is a lack in Debian to be able to rebuild easily your package, and you don't have to go with uh, tons of load of Perl code that you have to patch everywhere to make it work. Sorry? OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know the name of the package. This? PY. Playbit is already packaged into the archive. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say it for me. Pybit, P-Y-B-I-T. Now, I don't actually know whether it's much good, but I do know the people who designed it are hazy to work with and sensible and so on. Uh, yeah. I haven't tried it yet. But me neither. We, oh. we need to sit down and try these things and decide sure. something. So uh, I started as a Debian developer, but see the LLVM community is very friendly, which is a bit surprising when you see the number of corporations involved in it. It's very uh, easy to get a right access to the LLVM community and it's very friendly. So uh, I did a presentation at the LLVM conference and I was one of the organizers uh, in Paris uh, of this conference. Uh, I published this URL, http llvmorg apple and uh, dash apt, and I have been in touch with folks at Apple who, uh, who say, oh yes, that is great, we should publish that. So Apple is very, f people at Apple on this project are very friendly. So we are supporting uh, the latest Debian uh, stable release and uh, unstable, and we are supporting the latest uh, three Ubuntu releases. We are using uh, Jenkins for such tasks with uh, Jenkins Debian Glue, uh, which is a very nice project. I recommend you to use it. And we are using exactly the same uh, Debian directory as the one in the packages. So we haven't forked anything and everything in the open. Uh, we are also publishing some automatic code coverage uh, of the whole project. So it is usually, uh, if you're not familiar with the code coverage of a project, usually 80% is a very good percentage. So here for, LL for the whole LLVM toolchain, it is 76%, uh, which is a very good number. And those results are updated twice a day, and uh, many people in the LLVM community are using that to improve their test and the code coverage of those tests. And we are also running also once a day the scan build uh, analyzer on the base code. And it finds something like 300 error, which is not very, not very important. 
So what we are going to do next now is to improve the debit interface. As I say, it kind of sucks, so we, we have to improve it and uh, to make it at least as good as the, uh, the one I build uh, PG status uh, web interface. We have to make sure that it scales, and uh, we would like also to provide that stuff, which is unrelated to Clang, to other services. So uh, we, have be we have the infrastructure to make a PPA now. Uh, there is obviously some work to do, but uh, we could use that as a start. If some people are interested, you can get in touch with us on the channel, uh, or contact me, or Paul, or Leo. Uh, or we can use it for Debian mentors, uh, for example, if you okay. uh, for example, if you upload no, so, uh, if you upload a new package in Debian mentor, uh, it will be automatically rebuilt with uh, GCC, Clang, uh, Litcan, uh, ScanBuild, and Coccinelle. We have plenty of resources, so uh, we can do that. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Uh, we would like also to update the Debian policy. So it is a long run, it won't happen soon, but uh, we would like to, uh, to recommend people for not using and are coding GCC and G++, sorry, not using, still using GCC and G++, but not are coding that into their Debian wound or upstream. So we would like to, uh, to um, use starting to use USR bin CC and USR bin C++ as a default compiler, CMake is doing that now. And uh, we would like to do that in the um, in the next uh, in the next update of the Debian policy. Obviously, it won't be uh, enforced. It is just a suggestion. There is way too much work to do. And uh, regarding this uh, Debian policy update, we would like to uh, also add some more warning to Lincoln regarding that. Uh, I know it's all not always easy to detect, but uh, we could do something. No, no, because you can still override it. Uh, we'll keep. Um, yeah, of course. No, I, I just mean that you should be able to uh, override the GCC, yeah. that, that the CC uh, variable and the CXX. That's just uh, what I mean. What I mean here. Yeah, because it might help you also to also to cross build. If it is not, it is a bug, so it should be. And as you know, many people, many of your colleagues are already working on that at ARM and in ARM. Yeah, at least a few. <laughs> yeah, but they are friendly to Debian. Yeah. But I have the feeling that there are people at ARM who, who are working on LVM are very concerned by this kind of issue. Uh, but they're happy to apply patches which improve the portability of the software on ARM. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'm not suggesting to, uh, to uh, make just a switch between GCC and Clang. I'm trying to make something which will work for other compiler also. So just. Uh, quickly, if you override the CC or CXX flag, that you can uh, uh, provide your new compiler. So, for example, some other people in the room are packaging some other compiler. He's playing with his cell phone currently, and uh, Thomas, <laughs> and he might be interested by this also to provide a new compiler. So, if you want to play with your compiler, we can do that, and it w this kind of thing might help you. So, uh, one so. For this, it is not something that I will do in the next few months. I might do that in one or two years. But uh, if people are interested to touch in this kind of field, uh, there are also other things that we might try during the rebuild. So use the polyhedrical library, uh, which might, especially on uh, numerical computing software, get a huge improvement on the performances. Uh, folk are Google Russia are doing this uh, package, which is address and sweat sanitizer. It's basically when you compile a binary, it will include some static C code, which will detect when you have memory leaks uh, for the memory or race condition when you are doing uh, threading. And 
they say that it is uh, eight or nine times faster than Valgrin. So it is a nice piece of code. So we could say, okay, we are going to uh, compile the archive with that and run the test of the packages. And thanks to that, we will be able to find which package has plenty of memory leak. Obviously, as we are all packagers, we are not always maintaining the base code on basic stuff like that. But uh, some folk might be interested to know that uh, libssl or libmesa has plenty of memory leaks. Uh, so uh, we could also do that for the new Intel compiler. Uh, we can get a free license of the Intel compiler. Obviously, it is proprietary. But uh, we, uh, we could uh, add a new worker, which will build the C and C++ and Fortran code using the Intel compiler. I don't think it will work very well. I'm not sure they are supporting the same option as GCC. But uh, it may be fun to try with that. And we could also work with the uh, lib C++, which is uh, a BSD alternative of the lib STD C++ provided by the GCC folks. Uh, it supports uh, C++ 11 standard and the next one, probably soon. Uh, I'm open to any contribution, so if anyone wants to take one of these stacks, he's welcome. So I'd like to discuss a bit more on this project if people are interested uh, for the packages uh, to get the feedback and what kind of improvement you, you think we will get from that. Matthias. So did you do your uh, test results on, on Spark 64 or MIPS? Uh, you missed the beginning. I said that uh, it has been improved in the 3.3 release. So, uh, so, so but it's just uh, uh, MD64 which it, you did test? As a rebuild, yes. Okay. So um, I don't think it will change much. We are only testing the CMC++ code. We are not testing the binaries. Okay. So, so um, which architectures is RVM supposed to, to build now or claim? Uh, so ARM64, uh, R600, which is a graphic card, so it's not our issue here. Uh, the last uh, S390 uh, and 390X, and there is a lot of improve. There are a lot of improvements on MIPS and PowerPC. After that, I cannot tell you if it is uh, if you can compare it to GCC. I haven't tried. So, so now I'm focusing on AMD64, which is already a lot of work. But and as you know, I'm not trying to push that in for GC. Uh, it's a long run. <laughs> And and normal ARM, uh, yeah, thirty-two bit ARM support is good as well. Yeah, normal. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it is like I'm um, yeah. just talking about the. Yeah, it, I mean, I mean new. Sorry. Right. <laughs> no, uh, ARM is already well supported. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Thank you.